Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be here today and to talk about uh, a few things. I want to cover five things with you. First, cyberspace is critical to our nation, and we face a real threat in cyberspace today. Second, the Comprehensive National Cybersecurity Initiative is an overall government approach for securing our networks. Third, U.S. Cyber Command was created to combat the threats to Defense Department networks. Fourth, U.S. Cybercom is a member of a larger cyber team. We're one member, proud to be a member of that team, critical for the nation for this team to succeed. And fifth, and perhaps the most important, respect for the privacy and civil liberties of U.S. persons is a core tenet for us. Let me start out for the first one. Cyber is critical interest to all of us, and much of our nation's equities are dependent on securing cyberspace. Over the last decade, the internet has morphed from a medium carrying communications about things of value to a place where we store our nation's wealth and treasure. Consider the bounty of both personal and national treasure that resides on the internet. Information, money, medical records, personal email, critical infrastructure, and most important, national security. It is not a hyperbole to say that we have as much at risk or more than any other nation. Going to the heart of the matter, consider these facts about the networked world we live in. Around 247 billion emails are sent per day in 2010. About 200 billion of those were spam. I think I got all those. I have four daughters. <laughs> they send me most of that. 90 trillion email messages sent in 2009. Wireless internet users are growing exponentially. Currently, 307 million accounts worldwide projected to go to 1.4 billion by 2014. There are approximately 250,000 probes into Defense Department networks every hour. That is the unseen backdrop for this medium, the internet, that has become a way of life for all of us. The internet is a network of networks that connects millions of computers that our nation's businesses, government, and military relies on. It is fragile. Look no further than the incident in Virginia where dry failures crashed 10% of the Virginia state government servers and caused days of frustrations for tens of thousands of Virginians. Our economy, national security, privacy, and civil liberties are fully dependent upon information technology and the internet. We are being exploited now, and it is critical we improve our security posture to ensure the safety of our information and related systems. The threats are real. Malicious actors, a continent away, can attack our systems by taking advantage of vulnerabilities in cyberspace, networks, technologies, and computer security practices. Cyber actors cross borders inside and outside the US at net speed without revealing their identities and do damage, some seen and some unseen. These actors are becoming better organized and more sophisticated. They use widely available attack tools. They exploit our weaknesses in our technology. They take advantage of poorly secured sites that connect to the same interconnected network that our critical infrastructure and government uses. The Department of Homeland Security reported last year a 150% increase in cyber attack against federal agencies from 2008. We must have a strategy to defend and deny and that strategy needs to depend on cross-community expertise and teamwork. The previous administration, in recognition of this reality, 
took strong initial steps to better organize our efforts by creating the Comprehensive National Cybersecurity Initiative. The current administration fully endorses that initiative and is investing more intellectual capital and financial resources into it. The CNCI stresses that we must address protection of all of our federal government networks as a single entity and limit external access points to those networks. Further, it tells us that we must do a better job of protecting our classified networks. It mandates that we look for innovative ways to work across sectors to protect networks that command and control our critical infrastructure. Another key tenet of the CNCI is emphasis on cyber education to develop leaders of tomorrow. The CNCI is a bold step towards recalibrating our approach to cybersecurity. Another critical step, this one in response to the ever-increasing threats to DOD's networks, was the creation of U.S. Cyber Command, which formally stood up on 21 May of this year. Cyber Command incorporated two existing components, Joint Task Force Global Network Operations and Joint Functional Component Command Network Warfare. Cybercom is the newest member of the team, and its entity is tasked with the protection of cyberspace on the DOD networks. But there are other critical players in this arena that the CNCI empowers and that U.S. C uh, Cyber Command must partner with to ensure our national success. The National Security Agency is a world leader in cybersecurity expertise and plays a critical role in protecting and defending our classified networks. And as many of you know, I've been the director of NSA for the past five years. I would tell you, we have some of the best people in our country working there. It has been a privilege and honor to work with every one of them. The execution of their SIGINT and information assurance missions in cyberspace is vital to keeping bad actors off of our networks. As I mentioned earlier, DOD networks are scanned millions of times per day by unauthorized users. U.S. Cyber Command, working with information provided by NSA, will be better equipped to monitor the health of our military networks and identify and stop future attacks. Our unclassified government networks, like the Dot Mill Nippernet, is vital to defense operation. Our governments rely on it. Networks to run its operations assist its clients and customers and interact with partners around the world. When we start talking about protecting cyber equities relating to government networks, the Department of Homeland Security has the jurisdiction and the authority to protect this piece of cyberspace. We partner with DHS providing assistance and technical advice to enable their missions when appropriate. Understandably, citizens of our great nation take a lot of interest in the government's involvement in these areas, as we are people who are guaranteed a level of privacy by our Constitution. As the Director of NSA and the Commander of U.S. Cyber Command, I have an obligation to the law and to the American people to ensure that everything we do in cyberspace preserves and protects our civil liberties and operates legally under the Constitution while concurrently conducting our missions. Preserving those rights is not an added on activity or something we do because we have to. It is a core tenet of the way we conduct our business in all realms, cyber included. That is an obligation that is never compromised. We also have an obligation to the American people to help the team protect all that our nation has at risk in cyberspace. And we will do all that we can to partner with DHS, other government entities, and our industry partners to do just that. The United States has been a world leader in the development of technology and the growth of the internet. We made the internet it seems to me that we ought to be the first folks to get out there and secure it. Given the intellectual capital required to do that, it stands to reason that if we pool our resources 
we can effectively safeguard all of our nation's equities in cyberspace. The challenge before us is large and daunting. We have an obligation to meet it head on. I believe we have taken positive steps towards addressing our shortcom shortcomings in the inherent responsibilities of cyberspace. As a team, we can and will ensure the protection of the nation's vital cyber assets against any adversary. Thank you for the opportunity to briefly address you on these key issues our nations face. I look forward to working all with, with all of you that have, picked, uh, have taken up this challenge likewise. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Keith.